those or video greetings uh, from international collaborators. And next, as we continue on this Tuesday morning, uh, we'll have an overview of the Guyana Wellbeing Studies, and this will be done by Professor Christina Hoven, a professor of epidemiology and psychiatry, the Mailman, Mailman School of Public Health, Columbia University in the USA. So you're here. We filled up the seats this year. So that's a, uh, that's a great achievement. And I want to uh, uh, welcome all of you. And I particularly want to welcome our international collaborators, our, our leadership in the ministry, all the ministries. We are here together because we all have come to the realization that we cannot win this battle in this country or in any country if we don't come together. So I want to provide today an overview of where we are. I stood here last year, and some would say very foolishly, I said, we should do this every year. And here we are, year two. We had no money last year and almost no money this year, and yet we're able to put on a very powerful meeting of the minds. And I'm very, very proud as I look around the room and I see that we have, in fact, the representation of all of you here in Guyana to address the problems that are most pressing. So let's see what we can say. So why are we here? Uh, last year, we had a, um, uh, a question, what were we doing? We put the conference together in two weeks because we were all chafing under the, the banner of COVID and we wanted to do something. So we said, let's have a conference. Here we are. But why are we here? Why are we here? We're here because we want to share and present research findings and ideas. Our ideas, your ideas, collective ideas. We wanna increase collaboration among all sectors of services and society. We cannot, and I think we all realize that, we cannot win this battle alone. Although Minister Anthony has done an outstanding job as the Minister of Health continues to take the leadership in mental health and suicide prevention, he cannot win this battle alone. He knows that. We all need to come to the table. We all sectors of society, all service sectors, we all need to work together. We want to foster transparency. We want to know what each other is doing. It turns out that there are tremendous strengths, tremendous wonderful activities going on throughout Guyana that most of you don't know about. This conference provides an opportunity for you to hear from your peers and to learn what's going on. We want to increase the level of well being through this knowledge and through research. The bottom line is that we want to remove Guyana from the top 10 countries in the world with the highest suicide rates. Somewhere in this audience, there's a person from Hungary, a psychiatrist, Judith Balzas. Hungary, not too many years ago, used to top the list. Number one for suicide in the world. It's no longer in the top 10. Why? Because the country came together and decided that suicide was something they wanted to get rid of as a national banner, a shame for the country. And they did it. And Guyana's going to do it too. We're going to get off the top 10. That's one of our objectives. So who, who are the major collaborators for the Guyana Wellbeing Studies? I'm going to talk about another set of collaborations, but these are the two studies that we're doing. And as you can see here, we have a very expansive and prestigious group of collaborators. And I am very proud that they have come to the table. Some of them have spoken to you today. Uh, and we, we cannot, again, do it without this kind of collaboration. So we're good, right? We're very good. But we also aren't perfect. None of us are perfect. So last year at the closing session, we made three commitments and we did our best to meet them. 
but we failed in one of them. So one of them that we did succeed, we wanted to create a library of all the conference videos, which were uh, edited and made available online to everyone. So everyone in Guyana, any, anywhere in the world could enjoy the conference outcomes from last year. We wanted to develop a resource guide. One of the things that's lacking in Guyana and in much of the world is how do you find a service? With the stigma at the level that it always is, people don't want to go to services in their backyard. They want to go someplace else. Well, if you live in Region 6 and you think you need to see somebody for mental health services, you might want to go to Region 4. If you're in Region 4, you might want to go to Region 3. How would you find somebody in another region? How would you find somebody in your own backyard? So we created a, uh, a directory, and that directory is now online. It's on paper, and it's available to everyone throughout the country. So anyone can find services, whether you are a provider or a seeker of services, that directory is available to you. We did not succeed in adopting the RHO HIV awareness campaign and mental health that had been used successfully in this country some years ago around HIV, when uh, Dr. Adukro was the head of the uh, PAHO office here, it succeeded and we were gonna try to develop a model based on that. We failed. We didn't fail completely and we will finish it, but we didn't do it within the year, which is what we promised. We're not perfect, but we are committed. We are committed and I'm so thrilled to see all the young people here today because that is our hope. That is our hope to actually bring down the rates of suicide. Suicide rates are increasing most dramatically in the young people. And I'm gonna talk a bit about what we're gonna to try to do in this next year to engage the youth to help us. Again, we can't do it alone. We need the youth. So uh, we're gonna talk uh, at the closing and make additional commitments for the next for the next year. And I would encourage you all to be there and raise your voice about what we can and what we should do over the next 12 months. So just so that you don't lose sight of where we are, both nationally and regionally, you can see Guyana continues to be number two for suicide in the top 10 countries in the world. Sometimes it looks like it's number one, but it's always at least number two. Terrible, terrible. And we said last year, terrible, and we're gonna, we're gonna get off of the list. Well, we're still number two. So you look little, Lesotho is number one, twice the rates. But if you go down the list, you see number eight is our neighbor Suriname. And I'm so happy that we have representation here today from Terracom because Suriname is in fact a, a, a target place that PAHO was also very interested. UNICEF is very interested regionally. We have to do this locally, nationally, regionally. And you can see we, meaning this area, Guyana and Suriname, we're occupying two out of the top 10 places. We can do better and we will do better, but that's the list we want to get off, okay? So I want you to remember this list we're gonna get off of it. So just again, to repeat the suicide uh, rates in, in Guyana, you can see here uh, males and females, just so that you have an idea of who we're talking about. But you see always on the right column there, total females, males, we're always number two. We gotta get off the list. So, I know when I talk to people and they say, well, you know, suicides in my area uh, seem to be going down. And some people say, well, suicides in my area going up. Well, here you can see 2017 and 2020, they have moved. The rates have moved from one region to another, but they haven't gone down. They haven't gone down. They've shifted. So don't be, don't be lulled into thinking I'm in region six and my region has gone down, therefore suicide in Guyana has gone down, hasn't gone down. It's moved. And there's lots of reasons why, why that happens. I don't wanna get into that, but we can talk about it. Here you can see uh, suicide by, uh, by uh, gender and ethnicity. 
and this remains somewhat stable over time in Guyana. We don't know why. We don't know why when we, when we talk about East Asian, when we talk about uh, Amerindians, we're not clear why. One of the things that we're going to try to find out is why there are these differences and how we can target interventions to change. And here you can see suicide methods. And again, uh, I am very sorry that, uh, that uh, Lakshmi Bia Kumar is not here because she was going to give a keynote address on poisoning um, as a form of suicide. She is an expert in that in, in the developing world. And I'm sorry she's not here to present that. She got sick uh, and had a return, as she said, to India. And again, looking at the region, and we have to think about what is regional. These are the CARICOM countries. And again, if you look at the very top, you see right there, my little light isn't working, but I apologize. But you can see Guyana and uh, Suriname stay at the top. They don't budge. You can see these other CARICOM countries, they, they, they shift, they go down a little, they go up a little, there's a little movement. But the stability in the rates in, in Guyana and Suriname have not budged. And they haven't budged for a long time. This goes back to 2009. So we are collectively taking on a major challenge. 2009, I mean, I, I don't know. These, these, these rates may stay the same for the 10 years prior to that. I don't have it to look at today. But we do know that in this period, they haven't budged. So we are up against a major problem, but we can do it. We can do it. I see all the, all the uh, youth in here. We can do this. We can do it. We can do it. This is your country. And here we were talking uh, a few moments ago before the meeting started about suicide in the elderly. Here you can see it. You can see it across the ages, but you can see it in the elderly, you can see it in the youth, and the suicide among the youth is the most rapidly growing group in the country. Not only in this country, but throughout the world. Suicide in young people is a problem throughout the world. So we have to figure out what to do. I wanna talk about um, what we, know about when we classify people by different kinds of um, diseases, problems that bring about death. So here we have lost years of life. And when we look here in that green box, this is for ages 15 through 49. It's in 2019. And what you see there is violence, domestic violence, other forms of violence, self-harm, road injury, drownings, these are exceptionally high in this group. These are areas that we need to collectively target. They are not just separate indicators. They are, in fact, indicators with a lot of overlapping suicide. We need to understand more about how these things interact with, with suicide, mental illness, and target interventions. We all know we are never going to have a psychiatrist on every corner. We're not going to have a social worker on every corner. We are never going to have that. What we need to do is to target. We need to understand the risks of the different groups, the different regions, and then target interventions. We can do that. We can do that because we can't do it for everybody, but we can do it for some. But we need to know who those, who those sums are. Here just so you have, again, an idea of your neighbors. This is South America, right? So when we talk about the world and we say, look, Guyana, number two for suicides in the world. Well, what happens when we look at your, at your neighbors, all of South America? That's Guyana on the bottom. And why is it on the bottom? Those are car accidents, drownings, poisonings. Guyana's on the bottom and all of it. It means it has the most, proportionate to the, sample, to the population size, it has the most. We can do something about those things. The Ministry of Health, all of the ministries, and you, 
can help to address those things. So what did we do in this last year to try to do our part to move this forward? So collectively, we did different things. One of the things that happened is the uh, Ministry of Health made in very important strategic leadership appointments. This is gonna make a huge difference for the mental health of Guyana. Dr. Lakshmi Lau was appointed as the, as the Director of Non-Communicable Diseases, an outstanding person who is interested in mental health. Non-communicable diseases is a lot of things, but it includes mental health. She's been appointed to that position, which gives us a great hope that that leadership will take us forward. Dr. Timothy Morgan, he's the head of the mental health unit. I think everybody knows the mental health unit has gone through a lot of challenging times in the past five years, a lot of challenging times. It needed powerful leadership. Dr. Morgan is himself new to the job, but he has taken the bit and he's running with it. And because he has the leadership of Dr. Lau, we can expect that the mental health unit is going to be a transformative role in this country. So we all need to think about how we can support the mental health unit, Dr. Lau and Dr. Morgan. Okay. And the last thing, an outstanding position has been created for Alicia Solomon, who has now been made the national coordinator for suicide prevention. So there's now one person, one telephone number that people can call until we have a national hotline I'm sorry to say it's Alicia's telephone that we all have to think about calling. She's an outstanding individual. She's a social worker in the mental health unit, and she is the new national coordinator. So those are three powerful leadership positions that are going to help us move this forward. The Guyana Wellbeing Study. Uh, you heard uh, uh, Andrea uh, speak to that when she gave her greetings. This is a study that you heard me talk about last year. We've had this uh, funding for a couple of years. It's to, it's to look at the reasons why people are suicidal, why people commit suicide in this country at the ages of 15 and over. Uh, this is a project that finally last year, when we couldn't go into the field because of COVID, we finally out of frustration said, let's have a conference. That's where we are today. We're having the second conference. So what is that study all about? Just to remind you, it's to go beyond the traditional research of common risk factors, because that's not what's going on in Guyana, the common risk factors. We know what they are. We want to understand context and we want to understand what drives suicidal thoughts and behaviors in this country. Why have you stayed number two for so long? There are some unique contributing factors among this population that we need to find out about. It's a multi-pronged design. We're looking at a national representative sample. We're looking at clinical uh, attempters, people who actually come into a, an emergency room, people who show up in a clinic who made a serious attempt to kill themselves. We're, look, we're doing a psychological autopsy of those people who actually have died by suicide by interviewing family members. And we're now doing an emergency room sample. Um, so, the second thing here we're doing is uncovering the risk for suicide among youth in Guyana. And this is a new study. And this study is for ages 10 through 24. This was funded during this last year and it's to identify suicidal thoughts and behaviors in this youth population. So it's a whole new uh, population to look at and try to understand. Uh, we also have added in this project, the emergency room. And as I showed you all of those figures, which I hope were convincing to you that there's something going on in Guyana, it's not just suicide, but it's all kinds of aberrant problems, such as car accidents, car crashes, drownings, uh, poisonings. There's something, these things are in fact related. And what happens to the people who have these experiences? They go to the ER. And in ERs all over the world, people make the same mistakes. They treat the person for what they brought, what they're there for, broken legs, 
concussion, whatever. But they don't go beyond to find out what's really going on. If you're an individual and you're in a car crash and you're all by yourself and you run into a pole, shouldn't we be asking, why did you run into that pole? There are some fundamental questions that we need to ask in the emergency room to identify people who are in trouble so that we can target those people and try to prevent them from hurting themselves further. Okay, so the, the new study includes an emergency room sample. Uh, we did start data collection um, in August of 22, and we have begun doing the interviews. Uh, we had hoped to be able to report here today about the national probability sample, but like all good things, we've waited. Why did we wait? Because the census, and you've all, I hope, participated in the, in the census that's going on now, it's about to be completed, uh, the census was going on. So we said, okay, we will wait because it's better that we get a new census now rather than use the census from 10 years ago to get a good probability sample. Probability sample meaning we want it to be truly representative of all the people in Guyana, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your nationality, regardless of your, of your religion, regardless of where you live, we want everybody to be in the study. We want a representative sample. And the best way to do that is to do it on a good census. And that's what's going on right now. So we're waiting. We will do it in the spring. And next year, we'll tell you what, we, what we've learned. A couple of the things that we've also learned is problems. Problems when you try to collect good data in Guyana. There's a lack of a uniform suicide and suicide attempt reporting system. So how do you really get good numbers? So as I, I wanna say here in front of everyone, I think I said it last year in front of everyone to, uh, to uh, Minister Anthony, the numbers of suicide, as bad as they are, will probably go up before they come down because as we do this work, we will in fact find more people who are now being misclassified. Not not for any pernicious reason, they're just being misclassified out of not thinking about what's really going on. So the numbers may go up. So don't stone me. The numbers may go up before they come down, before we find the reasons. Uh, but we are committed and we are working with the ministry uh, to try to come up with a good uniform reporting system, not only for, for suicide and self-harm, but for everything so that the country's reporting system, the country's data becomes much more robust and meaningful for planning and intervention. The, the transmission of uh, suicide prevention coordinator, um, there's a, a problem about the transmission of information um, between the regions. Um, that is being also worked on. And the last thing, uh, and I appeal to the ministers and the leadership in this room, what we have learned is that, and this is not a secret, people in Guyana are underpaid. Underpaid. <laughs> underpaid, right? So we have to do something about it because we see doctors, nurses, social workers, psychologists trained in your university trained elsewhere and come back here to help their people and then they leave and they leave because the salaries are not sustainable not sustainable so we can whistle in the dark all we want but we need to do something the government needs to do something your ministers need to do something to raise these salaries and a very simple example that we have is we came and we trained we trained what did we train there trained a lot of people. We trained people to be interviewers to work in the study. And three months later, they were all over the Caribbean working in other countries. Why? Salary, salary. That happens all the time. You can't sustain the country without sustaining the workers. So for those of you in the room who know who I'm talking to, see what you can do about it because the people need it.
Another thing we did this past year was to uh, be funded for what we call GRIT, the very appropriate name. It's the Guyana Research and Injury and Training and Trauma Training. And it's at the University of Guyana. And the purpose of that grant is to train people, Guyanese people, to do your own research, to become researchers, hopefully around injury and trauma, mental health and suicide. And so we're, we, we started that program um, Dr. Gobin at the uh, head of the uh, medical school is the local uh, principal investigator on that study. And it's, um, these are the major collaborators for that study. Some of them are the same as the other and some, uh, some are different. It's, a, um, uh, it's, it's a, a sister program to the CDC funded uh, Columbia University Center for Injury Science and Prevention. And the Charles Brannis is the director of that center. And he's sitting here today. He's uh, he's here to meet and to talk about injury prevention here in Guyana, in part to again think about how these things relate to suicide, mental health, and well-being. The the GRIT uh, program, its goals and strategy are very straightforward. We want to we want to help to train Guyanese researchers to do your own research on your own. Uh, health and mental health problems. No one from the outside uh, can solve these problems. They have to be solved by you. We have some expertise. We have people in our bailiwick who have some expertise. We want to bring that, train people, and then you, you're on your own. Off you go. Um, it's, a, it's a training program with one or two years of, uh, of, of involvement for the students, and we are now recruiting for next year. Uh, so for, um, i just go over the, the, the faculty members here, uh, both here and at Columbia. Uh, again, uh, Rita Gobin, uh, Carol Lord, Leanne K uh, Candle, uh, Candel, uh, Alexander Harvey. I mean, these are, these are your leaders here. They are part of this training program. We want people to come forward, apply to be trained. Um, it's a it's a it's an excellent program to advance your own skills and become uh, leaders in the in the problem space uh, in Guyana. So the grit there are four grit pathways: uh, prevention, injury, trauma, and policy. We now are our first cohort are people in the mentoring pathway. Those are people who are senior in senior leaders here who want to become investigators and want to become mentors. We are training them. We now have uh, six people at the University of Guyana and six people from the hospital who are in this program. They have all completed a, a program at, at Columbia Online, a two-month program in, uh, in statistics and epidemiology as part of that training program. So the, uh, I, I want to encourage people to apply. You have a, a, an announcement for it in your bag, and you also can ask at the front desk. And of course, you can apply online by going to this uh, website. The new cohort will start in June 1st, uh, 2023. Another thing that happened is uh, we were able to get um, a what's called a, a diversity supplement to the grant that we have. And it's uh, it. It's now started, but like all good things that start, it's going to temporarily be suspended for motherhood. So, um, so we have Justine Wright, who's right over here, and she's the she's the recipient of a of a hard won uh, diversity fellowship. What this is is that the National Institute of Mental Health allows uh, supplements on grants that are already funded for people to do something in addition to, but in parallel with a grant that's already in place. One of the things that we know, and you saw that in the data, that there are differences in Guyana, as there are differences everywhere in the rates of suicide, self-harm, according to people's religious beliefs. Why and how is not so well understood, but it exists everywhere. And so one of the things that, uh, that uh, Ms. Wright is very interested in is seeing if she can understand that, at least in one group. So she's focusing initially on Pentecostals. And she's starting that project in New York and 
with the little Guyana, as they call it in New York. New York, as you know, has the, the largest Guyanese diaspora in the world, Toronto, the second largest. And she's working with the Guyanese community in, uh, in New York to develop a, a framework, which she will then come here and, and apply. So I just, I'm not sure who's in the audience, but I want to put them on notice. <laughs> I want to put them on notice that, uh, that these are the ministries that we want to definitely bring to the table in some official capacity. Right now, we are collaborating in one way or another with each of these, but we want to, in fact, bring them to the table. As I said, you, the Ministry of Health knows it can't do this alone. The Ministry of Health works with the Ministry of Social Services, works with the Ministry of Education, but we want to bring these people officially to the table to talk about and work on suicide and self-harm. So I... If you're in the room, uh, you should know that we're after you. We want you to come to the table. So what's new at this year's conference that we didn't have last year? One is we're gonna have, uh, during the coffee breaks, there's always gonna be an Ask the Experts uh, opportunity and people will be there. And for that half hour, you are welcome to go up and they'll it, who is there and what their expertise is. If you haven't already heard them present here at the conference, go up and ask them anything you want. It's your chance. They're coming. These people have come from, from Hungary and Geneva, uh, all, over, all over the world, uh, Australia. They are here to help. They have lots of experience. Uh, ask them anything you want. Um, they're available to you. On Wednesday uh, of this week, we're going to have from the Dome, we're going to have a worldwide webinar that is sponsored by the WPA and the WHO. And it'll be right here, and it's going to be chaired by uh, Dr. Norman Satorius, who is here. Uh, if you don't know, he's he's the uh, uh, he's the person who came up with this idea about stigma many many years ago. He's considered the father of stigma, but he's not stigmatized. He's just a very nice guy, and he's going to run this um, worldwide webinar, and you are all invited to join that. There will be participants from all over the world, uh, all over. So I encourage you to come and, and participate in that. Uh, this year, we're also having uh, this afternoon, we are fortunate, and you, you heard uh, uh, High Commissioner Berman talk about uh, the work that they're doing here, and this afternoon, we are sponsoring the launch of the IDRF program, which is a, a program here as a training program. And they're gonna start with 40 people and they are particularly interested in supporting mental health and resilience training. And they are gonna do that here uh, starting tomorrow. They're gonna to talk about it today. Uh, they're gonna to launch it today. And for the rest of the week, they are running a program here at the conference. So I encourage you, to, to talk to them and see how you can become involved in that work. Uh, on Thursday, many of you have heard or seen or wondered or gossiped about the fact that Northwell Health is here in Guyana. I know I was here two years ago and I saw them moving around and I said to myself, what are they doing here? What are they doing? What is not? Because they have a big operation in New York. What are they doing here? Who sent for them, right? Well, we had a very nice meeting and we said, come to the conference and tell everybody what you're doing here. So when I said in one of the earlier slides, one of the things we're committed to is transparency. We all need to know what everybody else is doing so that we don't waste time trying to duplicate it. We can collaborate and everybody knows. So they are going to present their five-year plan that they have worked out with the Ministry of Health in behavioral health. So they are going to make another contribution. So we have the, the Canadian contribution. We have the uh, Northwell contribution. Everybody should know. We have to know what everybody else is doing if we're all going to come to the table and work together. Okay? So I think that's an important thing to understand. Um, and on Friday, we're going to, I hope, create a new movement in Guyana, a movement among the youth. 
There are a lot of young people in the room here today, and I, as I said, I am thrilled that they are here. We are not going to change and get off that list without the leadership and the support of the young people. It's where the rising rates are in suicide. And as, as you heard, UNICEF refer to the problems throughout the world of suicide and self-harm in young people. And it's here. It's here in Guyana. The numbers are getting higher and higher among young people. We can't stop it without their participation. So I hope on Friday we're going to have a, a meeting and we're going to talk about how we can do this in the schools. The Ministry of Education has gotten involved. The, uh, the Minister of, uh, of, of Culture, Youth and Sports has gotten involved. And I should add, if you don't know, that our illustrious Minister Frank Anthony used to be the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports. So, you know, everything comes together. And I hope it comes together in this room around the prevention of suicide and self-harm. So that's what we're going to do on Friday. Um, using the international experts, um, we are also going to have a meeting. And that meeting will be a closed meeting. And it's a closed meeting because the people who did the reviews had the documents ahead of time. And we're going to work with the ministry, uh, work with Dr. Lal, and try to provide some input based on a wealth of experience among these international experts on how the new laws, the new mental health law and the new suicide law can best be implemented. Uh, it's a conversation, but it's a conversation that I think would be very useful to, to the ministry as the ministry tries to figure out what to do going forward. I wanna take uh, this last few minutes and acknowledge the people who make all of the work that we do possible. It's, it's a lot of characters, a lot of characters on this list. Um, they, they all give their heart and soul. I, I particularly wanna, wanna acknowledge the two people on the top, uh, Dr. George Mosa, who's the, what we call an MPI, it's a multiple principal investigator uh, on, the, on the two research studies, and uh, Dr. Uh, William Adupro, who you heard from earlier, who's our local project director, makes this happen. Um, we can't sit in New York and make it happen. Uh, he makes it happen here. All these people give, as I said, their heart and soul to make this work, and those two people are particularly uh, generous with their effort. I also want to take the opportunity to thank very profusely uh, Vice Chancellor uh, and Dr. Uh, Paloma, who's the Chancellor of the University, for her work in bringing to us the opportunity of having good technical support. I think you were here last year. <laughs> you saw that we, uh, we had people in the wrong rooms and in the wrong, on the wrong Zoom calls. We, uh, we did it by the seat of our pants, and we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, we'll make mistakes this year, too. It's okay. I mean, we all make mistakes. But uh, the university has been very, very generous, and these are the people who have uh, made this happen for us, and I want to thank them very profusely. And that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you.